guys welcome back to my craft table today we are going to do a mixed media project I haven't done one in a while it feels like and I am ex excited to get going on one so um, a friend and a subscriber to my channel her name is Michelle she lives in Montana she sent me a whole bunch of napkins for me to create with and these were three that were my favorite. Look at that beautiful, beautiful flower. I want to say that this is a dahlia or dahlia, dahlia, I think. I have them in my yard, but um, this one obviously is blooming. I have nothing up right now. And this one is cool because I like the little accents and these colors really worked together for me. And then this one is just amazing. I don't think that I can use it any way with these, but I sure love these colors together. Even that bud there works cool together. I'm not sure with that, but this is what I'm thinking about. I wasn't sure on my substrate and I went down in my stash down in the basement and these are um, prints of originals that didn't sell so I'm going to um, go ahead and cover these up so I can use these and I was just wanting to show you kind of how I was thinking as I was picking them out I thought you might be interested in that so here's my ones that I'm going to cover up and here's all the different sizes now this one could even be used like this so that might be an idea too. try to get it all into view here I'll uh, get it a little bigger there can you see that it's a little bit bigger but you can start to see my messy desk so um, Here's my substrates I was thinking about there. You can see those. And I really want to use this flower. So um, I'm going to <clears throat> cut this in fours because that's what you got to do. I know it's like, ah, oh, I can't believe you're cutting that napkin. I love this one so much. But look at how, how cool it is. You get four pieces here when you cut it apart. And of course, you got to take the layers off and... I'll show you how to do that. We can do that together too. I got stuff falling all over. Whoops. But I thought it would be easier if it was apart so that we could see which pieces we're going to use. And then I'll go ahead and do the collage for the background. And I'll probably do that. Um, just really fast. I'll fast forward it and um, put some music on. Oh, look at this one. Oh, darn. I only have that one piano. Oh, well, you know, you can't be beggars, can't be choosers. But isn't that, they should have just had that whole, whole part there. I'm going to set this aside because I don't know if I'm going to use it yet or not. Let's see if this one is a trick like that or not no nope. oh look at what I got here oh wow that is so cool that could almost be like on the whole front like this cut that apart and ooh, that's neat and definitely on the six by six I'm gonna set this aside I think with this six by six and we're going to think about that on that one um, I'm kind of liking how this is looking let's do it on the black side just so we don't have that ugly angel competing there that's quite a focal point there isn't it Whew. it's just beautiful that's kind of neat too, coming from the top. Coming from the bottom there. I kind of like this. I'm going to go with this one. I'm not sure how I'll put it down. I'll set all of these aside. Put this one here just to 
keep looking at me. This one, I just think... I want some more space so I can do lots of texture. Since I haven't done one in a while, I'm needing lots of room, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to go through my basket, and I'm going to pull out collage papers. I'm going to put down my matte medium, and I'm going to put collage papers on this background and cover this up because I don't like it. Um, and I make sure that my hole here in the back is correct. So this is going to be the top. Um, yeah, this was a piece that I did. I'm sure I have a video on it. <clears throat> and this is a print of the original. And uh, they didn't sell, so um, I'm going to cover them up and do something more fun. So I'm going to dig through my collage basket. And I could even show you what that looks like. Oh, it's right here. This is my collage basket. It's got all kinds of papers and all kinds of stuff in here. So I'm going to dig through here and see what um, gets me excited. That's collage basket number one. I have collage basket number two, which is here. <laughs> I've got words and stuff in here, smaller scraps in here, and then big papers and stuff in here. And this was um, shown to me by Lolly Mill, and there's a whole bunch of little scraps on the bottom in there. Um, this is how she cleans off her desk, and it works really well for me too. So I'm going to go through both of those collage baskets, pull out my collage, and I will be back, and we will get started covering up that background, okay? All right, be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. So I'm going to do this, um, and I'm going to, like, list my steps. So step one, I got my idea, got my thing that inspired me. And then I picked out my substrate. So we'll call that um, step one. Um, and including getting my collage papers together. <clears throat> I'm going to use a piece out of this large print Webster's Dictionary. And what's really fun is I just open it to a page. And then I kind of like look at the words on here. And um, one word that came out right here is inspire. So um, I'm feeling inspired by um, Michelle that sent me these beautiful um, napkins. So I'm definitely going to use that page and put that in my collage. That's pretty cool. I'm going to use my rip tool. I'm sure you've seen this before. I, I kind of liked this piece. I know who I want to give this um, project to. Uh, it's going to be my aunt. Her birthday is um, this next week. I haven't seen her for quite a while because she's in her 80s. And, um, you know, we've been staying away from each other. Well, I get my shot tomorrow. I'm doing the one shot, the Johnson & Johnson. So I'm excited about that. So I thought maybe next week I could ride my bicycle over there and um, give her this for her birthday. So we'll see how it turns out, if, if it's going to be acceptable. I also pulled out this piece of... Uh, wallpaper. I've done a lot of projects with this. This is a wallpaper that I put up in my kitchen and I have lots of scraps left so I wanted to use that. This piece with these lines, it's a wallpaper piece also, was calling to me. And then <clears throat> I grabbed this one out just right on a whim and then when I was looking I was like bam look at the colors there. So this is definitely going to go in the piece also. And a piece of pattern uh, pattern paper, I think, for texture. So I'm going to speed this up and um, just put on some music for you. And I'll be back and we'll go to step three. And that will be adding some paste and texture. And then we will go on from there to paint and focal point 
finishing touches and we'll be all set. And I'm actually timing this too. I'm trying not to have any interruptions. So far, I would say that I've been messing around for about a half hour. Of course, this may not take you that long to pick these things out, but you know, I, I had to, you know, get ready. My sister-in-law is coming over. She saw a psychic last night and she's coming over in two and a half hours. Well, two more hours now. So I screwed around for a half hour and um, I'd like to have this pretty much close to done. So um, we will see what happens. I am going to just do this really quick, speed it up, and I'm going to keep track of the time. All right, I will be back. Enjoy. Okay, step three, we're gonna give it some texture. So I'm gonna cut off these edges. My piece is dry now. It took about five minutes. I used the heat tool. And I really like the heat tool. Somebody asked me about that. What I have is 
this old <laughs> heat tool. I got it like at a uh, used craft sale, of course. You know, I must be the most frugal crafter. I know there is a frugal crafter, so that's not me, but um, I go to all the rummage sales and the used craft sales. So everything is dry. Here's how my piece is looking. I'm going to put down some modeling paste, and I did get my super heavy gesso back. I got it on my craft haul that I was on uh, last weekend with my sister. I'll link the video up here above, and I thought I would try and compare the two. I haven't used um, super heavy gesso in quite a while because I haven't had any, so um, I thought maybe it would be fun just to kind of compare the two, use both, just using a plastic palette knife, and I'm just going to kind of give everything some uniformity. Um, you know, not this piece versus this piece versus this piece. I'm going to bring it all together here with this white and with this um, texture paste. Um, well, like I said, I'm going to use this. is going to be super heavy just so. And if there is something I cover up too much, I will take it off with this wet towel that I have here. Okay, so I, I, I really love how that goes on. And this is just thicker, I guess. Um, I say they're very, very similar. Now remember, down here is going to be our big flower. So I don't want to get super carried away. <clears throat> and I definitely don't want to cover up that word inspire because that's kind of what this piece is going for here I guess so yeah I can't say that um, the super heavy gesso is better than the modeling paste they're both fine um, I don't know why I liked one more than the other but maybe in the drying we'll see there I'm just getting it on and then I'm going to dry and yeah looks like a hot mess but it'll be all right I want to make sure this is kind of in the piece there I don't know why it's just telling me to and this inspire I want that to show I got a bucket of water up here that I use for my brushes okay I'm gonna dry this put my stuff away and we'll be back for I guess step three already we did um, getting our inspiration getting together our substrates and our collage papers putting down our collage papers and, and adding some texture so I guess that was kind of one two three I uh, will be back okay one quick thing this is still drying but I want to cut out my focal point so I can do two things at once you know I'm trying to make this go a little bit faster and I was gonna cut out my focal point and I didn't want to do it without showing you I apologize for some of these sunspots, but the sun's coming in, and I'm absolutely loving that it is. It's nice out. Um, I pulled the pieces of napkin apart, and can you see this? There's like a black imprint on this one piece. I'm going to keep that just because it's telling me to. I think it might be cool just on, you know, like on a... Oh, uh, where is that one? Like this? You know, obviously I'll collage the back, but when the back is all white here, that's going to be a really neat layer of texture. So stay tuned. You might see that in a future project. Okay, sorry about that. Got off track. But I just put a little um, bit of water here. You could cut it out with your scissors. Absolutely. Um, I don't. I use a brush. This may be a little bit too big 
and I'm sure I'll find out here in a minute if it is or not. It's just what I grabbed. And if you've been in any of my workshops before, we do this in the workshops. And I think it's quite fun. Um, I wave it on my hands. You can see how dry my hands are. Um, and then I just wet the napkin like this. And it doesn't have to take a long time. You're not going to be 100% precise. But remember, you are working with a napkin. So... You can't be too terribly uh, rough with it. You're just kind of like melting that bit of napkin and taking it off. I got to turn it around here so you can see. And I don't know why I always shake so much when I'm on camera. You make me nervous, maybe, huh? I've got my window open in my craft room. You can probably hear somebody's starting up their motorcycle. So I apologize, but people are really getting the spring fever. It's supposed to be 60 degrees here this weekend. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that. I'm going to go all the way around this napkin and just take off these edges now you see mine it's got a little bit here don't worry about that you cannot get it perfect art is not perfect so I'm going to finish that while this is drying and then I'll be back all right I'm back I've got my focal point all cut out isn't that beautiful and we're going to put a little um, white gesso down to this background I'm just grabbing my big brush and giving it a nice dry. Doesn't have to be 100% dry, but I want to cover some of this up so that the background is kind of uh, all the way I the way I like it. I'm just using a plastic lid for my palette here, putting some gesso down. My Supplies are like, yay, you're getting to use me. I'm like, yes. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go over it all. And I've got my wet towel here in case I cover up something that I don't want to cover up. I kind of want to keep some of that uh, music notes in there. I want that wallpaper to be just a little whiter. It's kind of uh, old, old looking. Well, we're gonna make it more, uh, more old looking. Is that older looking? Is that better grammar? Sorry about that. <laughs> more old looking. Okay. You just keep going until you say, "Yeah, that's the way I think it should look." And the more you do it the more you know what you like because when you're done you're like love that don't love that I want to keep that inspire and I want to keep that kind of old time and a little bit of the music notes all right I use these pieces of bandana and when they get this dirty then I have a little bucket here and I throw them in this bucket and then they go into the wash <laughs> all right I'm gonna give this a dry it won't take long it's basically just kind of wet paint right now and then we're gonna put our focal point down with our matte medium and um, I'm thinking we're going to need some color, maybe some stamping in the background. I don't know. I guess it just has to talk to me. This corner is pretty dry, so I'm going to be careful and go ahead and do it. Um... Here we go. We're going to be careful now. And I'm using my matte medium. And I'm not using that same brush that I just put gesso on because I don't want it to have that white. 
I don't know why, but I love this brush. I'm going to put it down. And it's quite thick. I'm putting a good layer down. And I'm going to put my flower down. And I'm going to give a big blob over the top. And remember, this is a napkin. It's very fragile. All right. I just thought this flower was so cool. I think we need some here. All right, sorry I'm being quiet. I don't know why I am. Usually I have plenty to talk about. Um, I guess it's uh, maybe because I'm trying to play beat the clock here a little bit. Usually I don't do that. I just kind of work on it when I can. I don't have to finish, but I'd like to I uh, get to the... Uh, finishing touches and that's the best part then you kind of can't stop all right I am loving loving that and when you think you're messing with it too much you are like right here something just ripped off so stop I have such a hard time doing that so I'm gonna stop <laughs> I'm gonna give it a dry I'm going to see what I'm going to pull together, and I'll be back. Okay, we are moving right along. I did put a little more gesso over these areas just to make them a little um, wider. I wanted this to really stand out, and I just used my finger, and I just went around really quick, gave it a dry. We're going to put some French script in the background just because if you watch my videos, I use this stamp all the time. It's very well loved. I'm going to put it on with some archival ink, and this is one I use all the time. This is potting soil. And I don't want it on my flower, so I'm going to just go like this. This is the other piece of that napkin. I'm just going to do kind of like a really quick mask like that. I'm going to ink up my stamp. And this is by Impression Obsession. It's called French Script. I don't know if I can find it. I will try to. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to just dab it off with my towel, and I have a little water on there. And I'm just going to use kind of like the middle of the stamp. I don't want it to be perfect. But I want it to be there. That looks perfect to me. Done. Throw this away. Wipe off my stamp. <coughs> One thing that I've really learned is that as you're creating, if you put stuff back where you got them from, if you're kind of organized, um, your desk won't be such a mess when you're done, obviously. And your, your space stays nice and big. I'm going to give that just a really quick dry. And I am sure that you are probably guessing what we're going to do next. If you watch my videos at all, I want to do my wash with my burnt umber. Got to make sure everything is dry and sealed because if it's not, that napkin will peel right up because we're going to put a lot of water on this. So, um, it has to be dry. This is a technique I use all the time. I just love the outcome. And so, if you love something, you just keep on doing it. I mean, um, it doesn't 
bother me and I guess I'm making this so it's kind of my style. I always have to do it on a slant. I don't know why I do that either. I use a different plastic lid. This is from peanuts or cashews or something. I'm going to put my burnt umber on here and this is burnt umber acrylic paint. I use a ton of this. Um, I just get the Liquitex Basics. I'll link that below too if you need the link. Picking out my brush, I've got, I'm going to put water on here and something I keep in my craft room are these little um, squeeze bottles of water because my water here is yucky. I don't, I don't want to put that water on here because it'll change the color. So we're just making it into a real nice wash. <clears throat> and we're going to cover the whole piece and we're going to let it run. I'm going to get my spray bottle. Another thing I use in my craft room all the time, my spray bottle. I could do a video on like maybe top 10 products that I use all the time in mixed media if anyone would like that uh, let me know in the comments below I could always um, do top 10 for art journaling too and also top 10 for um, card making since I like to do all three um, that might be kind of fun let me know and if you're interested in that, if not, I won't do it. <laughs> Easy as that. Okay, so I hold it with my hand. I've got this to a real watery brown color. I'm going to go all over the top. I know everybody goes, no, I can't. Yes, you can. It's okay. If you feel it's getting too dry, give it some squirts with your water and watch how cool it is it's just really fun and it's bringing out all that texture muting down that white and when we do our final finishing touches with the gesso or not gesso but charcoal pencil and uh, get a sentiment on here it's going to be great all right Feels like it's got enough on for me. I've got to let it run. And this is just water. I'm going to give it a little shake. And then I like to tilt it back up, up on itself too. Give it time for that color to kind of settle in and all the grooves and things. Now if there's some parts that are a little too dark for you. You just dab them off, and if some parts aren't dark enough for you, you just add some more on. It's just paint. It's just paint. Don't be afraid of it. We like paint. And I really like the drips. You can even go like this to the side. And if I get rid of that sunspot there, I'm sorry, but, uh, yeah, I gotta give this a dry. I got a big hunk of paint right there. I'm actually going to lift a little bit of that brown off that color because I really love that purple color. And of course it will dry lighter. There, I think I got it how I want it. I'm going to dry this, clean up my area, and I'll be back. Okay, everything is dry, and I am not loving it. So, I'm going to have to do some things to it. I'm feeling like I want to smooth these edges off. I don't know why. It's just telling me to. I've got an emery board. And I'm just ripping these edges off. 
and if it's exposing some of that black edge, that's fine with me. Like I said, when you're creating, sometimes it just tells you what to do, and right now it's telling me to do this. It is a tiny bit damp, so you have to be a little careful. So now I'm going to clean up my area, and how I do that is I go with this Swiffer, and yes, I just sweep it right onto the floor because there's no use being delicate about it. My craft room does get pretty dirty. Okay, and then what I really feel I need to do is bring a, just a dot or a splash of this color in. And this is Deep Violet Liquitex Acrylic Ink. And here's my swatch of it. It's this one right here. And I know that that was on that piece of pattern paper when we started. So I feel like I just need to put a splotch of that up in this corner. Oh, if I can get it open. And I have one of these all the time in my craft room and boy does it help I don't know if it's because I'm getting older <laughs> I just don't I'm not very nice to my paints so I'm just feeling like I need a little bit up here and I'm going to shut my paint because if any of you know what happens I yeah look at that I spill it, as what I was going to finish my thought there. Look at that. It's exactly what it needed. Maybe just a little bit over. I'm going to dry this, though, because I like it right where it is. And I don't want it to move anymore. And once you dry this ink, it becomes permanent, which is important because we have a few more layers to go on here and uh, I don't want that to move once you get it right where you want it and of course it's going to dry a little bit uh, a little bit lighter Okay, I think that's dry enough, so I want to just add a tiny little bit here and let it come down, see if I can get that done. I'm being very careful not to spill this ink. I've got a trusty towel here on the side, a couple of them. And let her run. I don't want it to run into that flower because I think that would take away. I think that's absolutely perfect. Just like that. What do you think? Yay? I think so. Now it's kind of at that point where you're, oh, am I going to wreck it? Am I going to go too far? I hope not.
just kind of wanted it to go all the way to the edge like that. And I'm just tapping on it. And I'm letting it run all the way to the bottom. I think so. I'm going to give that a dry. I'm going to dry this and I'll be back. Okay, I have this new craft product on my desk, and I can't tip it because <laughs> it'll spill. Um, muted gray, and it's an acrylic ink, just like this one was. Make sure it's shut. This one was deep violet. <clears throat> this is my color swatches of the acrylic inks that I have. So I'm going to quick swatch this one. It's calling to me like I need to put it on this piece. But I'm not sure. I don't want to mess things up at this point. So I'm just going to get a little bit of water. And I'm going to swatch it on here. I think it's really quite a purpley color, not a gray color. So let's see what we get here. Yeah, I thought it was a real purpley color. Now, do you think I should... Do I dare put a little bit of that on there? Oh boy, I just don't know what to do. How about just a tiny little dot? Uh, saying that I have is, uh, God hates a coward. <laughs> well, huh. sometimes you're kind of afraid to do things. I just think like right here. And... If not, I'll, I've got a paper towel here. I can quick wipe it up, hopefully. It didn't really make a difference. I could use another dot. I'm afraid. Shouldn't be afraid, huh? Why am I afraid? I don't think my aunt would not like it. If she saw it and she said, oh, well, I wouldn't have put that purple there. Or what if it turns out to be the coolest thing possible? I don't hate it. But I am going to leave it alone now. Okay, so I'm going to dry it. Then we're going to put some clear gesso on here. And we're going to finish it with our charcoal pencils. And I got some um, some cool um, water-soluble pencils. We're going to use some of those. So I'm going to dry it. I'll be right back. Everything is dry. I put a coat of clear gesso on it and I dried it off camera so I could save some time and then I'm looking at my piece now and we're going to do finishing touches so this would be one of the final stages um, I could definitely put a sentiment in here but I don't know what to put so I'm not going to put anything right now I'm not sure if I will at all um, I'm digging out my items for finishing touches. I've got my brown and my black Stabilo All pencils. And I'm going to give them a real good sharp because they should be nice and sharp. I got my 6B Extra Soft Generals Charcoal Pencil. That also I want nice and sharp. I have a white charcoal pencil that I got with my Crafty Stash. And I already linked the... Uh, video and then I have two of these neo color aquarel aqua 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 pencils I don't know crayons neo color too and they're water soluble so they have to be on a fixed surface and because I have everything swatched out I can see that these two colors are the ones that might look nice with this flower and as I'm looking at it, this corner has just a big hole here, and it's really bothering me. So I'm thinking I need some green, because I've got this, these greens going on, and it would make a visual triangle. So I'm looking through my color swatches, 
and the colors that I'm feeling would work is green gold this one here and that is a fluid a uh, golden fluid acrylic and also this olive green that matches here and that is another one of these inks um, this one is an Amsterdam acrylic ink so we're gonna try that put everything away where it belongs trying to keep my area kind of clean and I don't want a lot here I'm thinking maybe just like a, a brayer and sh so like that um, what am I going to use to brayer on it something something like just this I'm going to put some paint on here I'm going to do this little bit of paint first just a tiny bit and then a bit of this ink put it over here and see what happens I've got water on my paper towel so I can wipe it up if I hate it I don't hate it that's exactly it finished. I'm going to wipe this off and that's exactly what it needed. Just that little bit of green up there and maybe even just a lift of it off. Perfect. Put this step away and going to dry it and then we're going to go to town with the finishing details. We're going to give this flower some great dimension so it just pops right off of this piece. Then we're going to edge it so that it's got a nice frame and border and then we'll decide if we need a sentiment or not. I don't know. I just can't decide. This green looks really bright to me now, don't you think? So, one more thing. I'm going to add a drop, if I can open it, of my Burnt Umber acrylic ink. I'm not going to spill it. Just a drop right there. Spray bottle. just to calm it down a little bit. In that corner. I don't know. Maybe we'll fix it with some um, brown Stabilo pencils too. See how that uh, water made that clear gesso kind of go opaque? We don't want that. I'm sure that we can fix that. It, it just needs a little brown up there now to mellow it out. And we'll get there, that's for sure. So, all right, what I'm gonna do is I've got my all my stuff here, my water, my pencils, my crayons. I'm going to sharpen everything. Put away this ink before I spill it. And I'm going to go ahead and just do the finishing touches um, with music. And when we're done, I will check back. And if you have questions, concerns, or need to see anything that I did differently, 
um, you let me know. But I'll speed through this process too because it does take a long time. So I will move this shadow. Put some music on and I'll be back. I'll even pull this down a little bit. How's that? Okay. Uh, we'll see how long this takes me.
This is taking me a while. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm liking how it's looking right now. I'm just adding a little bit of white highlights to some of this and blending it with my finger. Just making those colors pop a bit. You know what I really want to do and I'm like super afraid to do it? Is I want to give it a spray of water just to kind of you know like because this is all water soluble chalk on top and I think if I gave it just a little spray of water it would kind of like I don't know meld together a little bit I'm deathly afraid of doing it <sighs> what do you think do you think I should try it I'm not sure um, and it's really calling for a sentiment, and I just cannot think of anything to put on here. Um, my charcoal pencil worked a lot better than my Stabilo pencil, so I'm liking that. I'm going to just try it. I'm just going to give it a real quick spray of water, okay? <gasps> I'm afraid. Okay, I did three squirts of water, and I'm not going to do any more. It, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. It kind of, like, moved some of the charcoal and some of the um, soft pastel so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to um, let it dry, air dry. I'm going to go and get my COVID shot now at 4 o'clock. I'm getting the single dose. And the reason I get to get it is because I'm a, an essential worker because I work at the daycare. So um, I'll think about a sentiment. I'm not sure. I really like it just the way it is. I just don't even want to breathe on it right now because it's just that water is just kind of sitting on top. So I'm going to leave it and in the pictures at the end you may see a sentiment here. It's really calling for me to put a sentiment on. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, like I said, I hope you liked it. Thanks for stopping back to my channel and dig out those paper napkins because look at how neat that turned out and here is what it was in the beginning so I think I think it kind of looks very very cool I hope my aunt will like it for her birthday I bet you she will she's a big gardener and I think she'll probably put it right up on a wall or something I'm hoping or you know who knows Thanks for watching. I'll see you again on Saturday for Gardener's Journal Part 3. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Leave comments below. And if you have any questions or concerns, I love to answer my comments. So take care. Have a great week. Bye.